All right, hello, welcome. My name is Jason Welsh, and I got a question a few weeks ago about um, something with Adobe Illustrator CS4. And I said, well, no problem. I'll make a video because it'll be a little easier for you to understand. So I'm going to share that video with everybody. I think it'd be wise. It was put to me by an iconographer. An iconographer is a person that makes uh, the iconic figures uh, painted on church walls. I was like, wow, that's great. You know, that's so interesting. So that is going to make one cool video. So I was giving some examples. And uh, so I'm going to open up Adobe Illustrator and show you those. This is CS4. First off, he had a two-scale image of the church. Just like that. So if I zoom around here. And I use the thing called the navigator. Okay. Let's say, for instance, I want to reset everything to look like mine. Okay. We can go into Window Workspace and go to uh, Essentials. Okay. And then go Window Navigator. So I can zoom in. And what I want to do is put a JPEG image here scanned in from a computer. So what I'm going to do is go File, Place. And I can place this image right here, which is going to be really small. So I can go into my black arrow, and I can hold Shift and click and drag. This will uniformly scale the image. So I want this figure right here to appear right in the center, just like that. Now, what's going to happen here is there's going to be several of these. There are several drawings of different iconic figures. So I'll give you another example. I can go File, Place, and place this other figure, and it's going to be equally small. And again, if you hold shift, click and drag, you can drag it up and make it the size that you need. Now, let's say I make it really big. What happens is it's going to cover over my church. So right here, now, you got to excuse my navigation skills with the navigator. It's kind of backwards in CS4 for some reason. So see right here, this is actually white on top of my church. And so that's some things I got to look out for when placing items. They're going to be opaque and cover over my original design. So my first thing here is to live tra trace each and every item in here. So by clicking on it, I can go to live trace and go to tracing options. And I'm going to choose to ignore white and hit trace. I'm going to do that over here too. Click on that one. Tracing options. Ignore white. Trace. Now, what was asked of me by the client is this. I have a variation of stroke. This stroke is much larger than this stroke. And in turn, much larger than this stroke right here. So how do I get all my strokes the same width? Well, now that's a different story altogether. So, what we have to do is go to the layers and make a new layer. Go ahead and click on the first one and use this little meatball character, it's a little square, and move it up to this layer. Move all the new images into one layer. And go ahead and lock the rest of the layers. Now, what we have to do is go into each one of these into the transparency setting, which is this icon here, and lower it to, oh, let's say like 27, 28%. So I do that for both images. What that allows me to do is go ahead and zoom in to like this one. And since there's a variation of stroke, I must now go in here and manually add strokes. Now, in CS4, 
there's a nice little tool for this. It's called the blob tool. So I can go to the blob tool and I can use the bracket keys underneath the plus and minus key to change the variation of stroke. So this is a good variation stroke example right here. See this point? So what I want to do is draw a new stroke in here. So Just like that. And you notice these are all vectors. I'm using a Wacon drawing tablet. I'm not taking a whole lot of time to do this. If I did, it'd be more accurate. But I'm just saying that you can get some pretty good detail using these. And you can get all the same strokes. Because now when I go over to this one, I'm using the same stroke method, but you can see it looks thicker. Okay, but it's actually the same size as the stroke used over on uh, the first iconic figure. So all the strokes will be the same this way. This is a very coloring book type of deal because now, since all the strokes are the same, um, they're just very uniformed across everything. So. I would choose your smallest image. Let's say this is my smallest image right here. So I would definitely trace out your probably smaller image first and get those lines done because those are going to be very small and then go on to something like this using the same stroke value. So always start with your smallest and then work your way up. Now, a few things that, you know, he was concerned about was this. Let's say I mess up. So I'm going to go in here. I mess up and I go over my lines just a little bit like that. Well, now I could just go to the eraser tool and erase that back. But I have to do it very carefully because I want to maintain that same line stroke. So if I went like that, it would not maintain it. So if you mess up, make sure you use the undo eraser. Just like that. So very easy to erase that as long as it's on the same layer. And again, that layer is there and all the rest of them are locked out. All right. So I hope that helps you out. Iconifer. Iconographer. That's what it is. Iconographer. And uh, enjoy. If you need any more help, let me know. And have a good one. Again, my name is Jason Welsh. Enjoy the workflow.